What is going on, FG3000? Back in the place to be, and welcome to the mobile gaming tier list for the month of June. Let's get right into it. Starting off with Data Live, this time in HD. So, Data Live HD is the HD version of the previously released Data Live Spirit Pledge. Uh, a lot of things have changed, you know, streamlining, quality of life. They've taken out a few kind of annoying systems and kind of really refined the gameplay flow of the title. And of course, it's in HD as well. Um, but as far as the actual minutes minute combat, is pretty much unchanged from the original version and I gotta say even back then it was quite dated and especially now in the face of new action RPGs coming out this year and on the horizon next year data life HD is definitely gonna be left behind using this like older system of side-scrolling action RPG with kind of stiff animations it just really doesn't hold up in the face of the competition that's on the way so if you like data live as an IP I would probably give this game maybe closer to like a C or something like that but if you're coming into this game and you really don't know a lot about the IP and you're just wanting to play an action RPG beat em up, you could definitely do better. So for me, Data Live HD for most people, that's gonna be a D. So the next game up on the tier list is gonna be Artery Gear Fusion. Some people call this game Epic 8 or Epic 7 with quality of life. And quality of life, this game absolutely has, maybe even to a fault, you can pretty much knock out all of your dailies, even your PVP entries in like less than 25 minutes, right? So it is quite side game freely in that respect but like I said that might be a pro or a con depending on what you're looking for now in between knocking out your dailies in record time and turning this bad boy on offline auto repeat there is a lot of fun to be had when you're actively playing this game as well really great aesthetic I love the characters and the waifus in this game they really come to life quite well with this game engine like the animations are so good on these characters it makes you forget about the chibi models like like for real this is one of those games where yeah you look at the chibi models you prefer them to be more full grown but as soon as you start seeing them in movement and in action you quickly forget their chibi almost for, for the most part I mean come on what do you want <laughs> so um artery gear fusion I definitely like this game I think it has a bright future there's also an altelier collab right around the corner as well so there's a lot to be excited about artery gear fusion can't wait to play this game I can't wait to see where it goes in the future for me artery gear fusion that is going to be an A from FG so next up on the tier list is going to be ensemble stars music now I've played my my fair share of rhythm music tapping games on the mobile platform but something about this game just really resonated with me I just I really like the music in this game it stood out to me much more than any other rhythm music game that I played in the past so that was a big part of it not to mention the graphics the costumes all of the dance routines really well made game however I will say when it comes to this game and pretty much any game within this genre when you have to start playing this game every single day the knock out your dailies and your weeklies and your achievements the rate of burnout becomes extremely evident especially when you're playing on high difficulty right like if it's late night and you're just trying to knock out your dailies trying to play some of these high difficulty songs is not going to be a good time now there is autoplay but it's purposely neutered to not give you the highest taps even if you've already beaten the stage which i think is a bad idea so with all that being considered ensemble stars for me that is going to be a b above average so next up is dynasty legends 2 and this was quite the sleeper for me so this game does have some mmo traps Trappings, but I would call it an auto quest, auto path, half auto combat, half manual combat, mobile MMO. So yes, you do kind of bounce from NPC to NPC, auto navigating through town. But once you get into combat, I do think it's a nice blend between some stages are definitely auto combat friendly. And then some stages you absolutely cannot defeat on auto. Unless you dramatically overpower the content, you're going to be playing on manual. And some of the boss encounters are just so good. There's co-op dungeons, raids live pvp this game is extremely well done and if you're a fan of this universe you absolutely owe it to yourself to give it a try so dynasty legends 2 that's also going to be a b above average from fg so next game on the list is jurassic world primal ops now unironically actually had a pretty good time with this game because i mean come on i'm a dinosaur summoner how can you not have fun summoning dinosaurs in people's faces well somehow they created a way to make this game not that fun by giving you control like 99 percent of the time you're playing this game you're controlling a really boring human like it's like they were purposely trying to figure out a way to make this game not fun like dude make the human way more fun or allow me to just control the dinosaurs like i don't, I don't know who thought controlling the human in this game was going to be a good time it's not and all that being considered right as bad as controlling the human in this game is 
the dinosaurs almost make up for it. Like the dinosaurs almost make it worth it. But unfortunately it has those, you know, Western gotcha tropes where they have a tiny stamina bar because the game is just hell bent on making sure that you log in every few hours, which I absolutely can't stand. And the game seems like it's purposely designed to not give you the right dinosaur. So you're always kind of playing stages with worse dinosaurs than you should, encouraging you to go spend money. So unfortunately this game could have been better. I mean, dinosaur summoner, like they had the formula, the DNA was there, but, it, but just looking at this game overall, it just seems like they were determined to snatch failure from the face of victory. Like that's what this game feels like. Dude, dinosaur summoners, you had it, you had the idea, but you kind of ruined it with the stamina bar and the human aspect. So for me, Jurassic World Primal Ops, um, that's gonna be a D below average. So the next game on the list is gonna be The Walking Dead All-Stars. This is basically an idle game with The Walking Dead skin. It actually does idle games exactly the way you think it is. Everything you expect from an idle game, this game does with a Walking Dead skin. So with that being said, it's not bad. It's just derivative, right? So if you really like The Walking Dead and you want an idle game with it, you probably might give this one a C or something like that. But for everyone else, it's definitely a D, I would say. Um, I would much rather play The Walking Dead over Z on the Magic Scroll, so this seems right. So The Walking Dead All-Stars, idle game with The Walking Dead skin, D from FG. So next game on the list is gonna be Bloodline. Now do keep in mind that this game came out eight years ago and then Crunchyroll got their hands on it. Now I know that sounds terrible so far, but hear me out. Crunchyroll got their hands on it and decided to clean the game up. So they added streamlining, quality of life. They even redid the graphics and the menus. And I think someone at that studio was like, you know what? We're not gonna make this game like a main game when it comes to gacha games. Like we can't compete with the big dogs, but let's go ahead and make this game the best side game it can possibly be. And when you go with it with that mentality is actually a pretty solid experience. So for me, this is probably one of the better Crunchyroll games since Princess Connecta. That's gonna be an easy C from FG. So the next game on the list is gonna be Disney freaking Mirrorverse. <laughs> so if I was being really petty, dude, I'd give this game an F. Like I'd straight up give it an F, but I'm not gonna be that petty, all right? I do completely think that Kabam put this game out as an MVP, a minimal viable product. You can't convince me that they put in all their effort to make this game as good as they could, right? I, I feel like Kabam just doesn't realize how much money they could be potentially making with the Marvel and the Disney license, right? They already fumbled the ball with Marvel Realm of Champions, that game shut down, and I feel like they didn't really learn from their mistakes. I feel like they made the same half-hearted effort here in Disney Mirrorverse. Like, it just doesn't feel like they really wanted to bring this world to life, and to me, it's just ultra disappointing, not to mention it has the same old Western gotcha trappings with the tiny stamina bar. Game is gonna be constantly asking you to log in, and speaking of Western gotcha trappings, this game also employs one of my least favorite features when it comes to events and that is character restricted stages so this game and like a lot of other games like this like age of magic raid shadow legends they have stages that are like yo you want to do this stage too bad you don't have buzz light here haha -ha. I, I cannot stand games that do this and it's pretty much only western gotchas eastern gotchas don't do this if an eastern gotcha has an event you can bring any character that you want and if you find like a non-event character that's like an r rate that absolutely destroys the event. Hey, good job. Like that's the spirit of a hero collector. But for whatever reason, Western gotchas only want you to bring specific heroes to events. You wanna do this event? Well, you can only bring Toy Story characters. You wanna do this event? You gotta bring Mickey Mouse. I, I just can't stand when Western gotchas do this. And this is such a common thing. And I know why, right? It's not just money. Like, yes, they want you to spend money to get the event character so you can participate in the event. That's part of it. But another part of it is that they just don't want to create content where they have to consider that the player can bring any character they want, right? They love to be able to restrict the player's ability to bring certain characters to the events. That way they can counter pick you because they know exactly which characters you're gonna bring because they force you to do it. But on the flip side, Eastern Gachos, they create content and it's up to you, dude. You're wide open. If you find a trick where you can like stun lock or freeze an enemy or do this and do that, dude, that is theory crafting. That is like the heart and soul of hero collecting and, and team making and team building. But Western Gotcha is just spit in the face of that. I can't stand it. <laughs> Are you done, FG? I'm done. I'm done. Um, but 
to be as fair as possible, I'm gonna take my biases away and give Disney Mirrorverse, once again, I, I feel like it should be right here. In between C and D, it should be right here, but I, I guess I'll give it a C, but I don't like it. Oh boy, I gotta calm down a little bit, man. I was getting a little heated. All right, all right, let's chill on this next one. Oh, it's Diablo Immortal. <laughs> So Diablo Immortal, I feel like you really can't talk about this game unless you bring up the microtransactions first. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way, right? $100,000 plus to fully max out a character in Diablo. That is an absurd amount of money, life-changing money for most people on this planet. So now what do we call people that spend life-changing amounts of money in gotcha games? Now, if you answered whales, you're right. And the reason why you got that answer correct is because whales have existed long before Diablo Immortal. And as a person that's been covering these games for years, I've already kind of thought about how I feel about mobile games and whales. And this is my philosophy, right? This is my philosophy. And you guys already know it because it exudes through all of my videos, right? I don't base my enjoyment of a gotcha game or a mobile game against the maximum potential of a whale, right? So I base my enjoyment on the characters, the waifus, the hype collaborations, events, raids, dragons, like those are the things that get me excited for playing these games. At no point do I ever even consider what whales are doing on planet Saturn, right? Like I don't even, like that, that's how far away whales are to me when I'm playing these gotcha games. And I know I'm not by myself in that thought process, right? Don't boo me, I'm right, all right? If you are watching this channel or you play any popular gotcha, even some of the unpopular gotcha games out there, you are huffing the same exact copium that I'm huffing, right? You are playing your favorite gotcha game in spite of there being whales out there that spend six figures, seven figures in these games, depending on how old the game is, you're playing these games in spite of them, right? Because you have found a way to enjoy these games without having to spend absurd amounts of money. And that's what I do. So when I look at Diablo Immortal, I'm focused on the game. Like, oh yeah, so you can spend $100,000 and max out a character? Okay, like, like, like real talk, right? If you came up to me and you're like, FG, there is this brand new game out, but whales are spending so much money in it. Can you believe it? I'd be like, dude, word, dang, for real? That's crazy, dude, for real? So is the game good? <laughs> like that's, that's my thought process. So for me right now, the way that mobile gaming is, the way that gotcha gaming is, the current monetization schemes that all of these companies run, Diablo Immortal monetization is barely even newsworthy to me. Like it's not even, even newsworthy like to me personally as a person that plays these games all the time that sees these games that sees the spinning that goes on behind the scenes Diablo Mortal is barely newsworthy like dude there is someone that sends me a message like clockwork every few months to convince me to try to come back to Marvel Strike Force I'm not coming back to Marvel Strike Force but th but this person is nearing seven figures all right Hold, hold, let me let me say that one more time. He is nearing seven figures spent in Marvel Strike Force. Yes, Marvel Strike Force is a little bit older, but dude, we're talking about almost a million dollars for this person to be a top player in a top guild. I'm using those words very specifically because he's not number one. His guild's not number one. He's just a top player. A, almost a million dollars spent. So what does that tell you? People in Marvel Strike Force have already exceeded a million dollars spent in that game, right? And so far I've been pretty focused on whales spending money, but I know the flip side of that conversation is on the developers and the publishers saying that, you know what? There shouldn't even be a way for you to spend that much money in the first place. Like developers shouldn't be allowed to have systems that prey on people to allow them to spend six and seven figures in these games in the first place. And some of these people have created different types of monetization solutions that they think might fix mobile gaming. There are some people that wanna just blow the whole thing up. They want everything to be buy to play on mobile. So everything needs to be $29, $39, $49. So I don't think that would work, but some people consider that to be a fix for mobile gaming. Now for me personally, the big reason why I play mobile games is for the live service aspect. We've gotten to the point now where mobile games update more than paid PC games with subscriptions, right? If you're playing a mobile game and you haven't had 
an event in like one or two weeks, you're like, dude, is this game dead? What's going on? So what do you want to do with mobile? Do you want to have all these games to be like World of Warcraft where they're buy once with a monthly subscription? Well, dude, what, what about the people that want to juggle like four or five different mobile games? That kind of screws them over. Now you're paying like four or five different monthly subscriptions. How about the ESO model where you buy it once, but there's no monthly subs? Well, guess what? Those games still have microtransactions. So how do you handle the microtransactions? Do you put caps on microtransactions? Who sets the caps? Is it a cap that resets daily, weekly, monthly? Is it $1,000, $5,000, $10,000? Who sets all this stuff, right? Or do you tackle the gotcha? Do you completely remove gotcha and loot boxes from all these games? And if you want to buy something, you have to buy it out of the shop. Well, guess what? We already ran that experiment with Lord of Heroes, and it was woefully unpopular. People were just pissed off to see characters in the shop that were $50, $60, $70, and $80. And you know what you do when you have paid characters in a shop like that with no gotcha access? You absolutely destroy the free-to-play players. Because right now, in a gotcha game world, if you're free to play you have a chance to pull the highest rarity ssr character just like a whale you can wake up one day do a free to play pool and get a top tier ssr character free to play by the way the whole reason why the meme exists free to play by the way is because free to play players seem to have fantastic luck when it comes to pulling high quality characters now if you make characters paid only in the shop how do free to play players get the 40 dollars character out of the shop they don't so they completely get demolished in that system this is a long conversation and i can go on on this forever all i'm saying is that monetization on mobile games especially live service style mobile games is extremely complicated i don't think there's a great answer right now i'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below but until we get an answer that is adopted and well received from everybody and all these game companies start doing it i'm gonna just play games based on the gameplay factor and nothing else. I'm not gonna worry about whales. I'm not gonna be worrying about best in slots, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to get the best possible thing. I'm gonna play a game all the way up until it's not fun anymore, and I'm gonna uninstall that bad boy and move on. That's just me, FG. <laughs> what game we're we talking about again? Diablo Immortal. Now with that long diatribe out of the way, when it comes to Diablo Immortal, I feel like a large majority of the people will never even get to the point where they even have to worry about monetization and pay to win because I think the daily gameplay loop of Diablo Mortal lets the game down big time. I think the graphics were good, the combat was good, you know, voice acting kind of falls off a little bit midway through the game, but the voice acting was pretty good. Dungeons were well designed. I Dude, it's a Diablo in your hand, but the daily gameplay loop, the thing that you're gonna have to log in and do every single day, Dude, so woefully designed. Like the bounty system, day two, I was done with doing the bounty system. Not to mention boosted dungeons, right? And like I just said, the dungeons in this game were actually pretty well designed. So let's say you wanna sit back, relax, grind some boosted dungeons and get some gear. Oh, sorry, there's no cross server. So you're gonna be waiting in queue. Hopefully your server's not completely dead. Like whose idea was that, <laughs> right? So I feel like some of these gameplay issues are gonna smack people in the face way faster than the whole 100,000 dollar max character thing like those are the problems that i feel like diablo immortal has to iron out first so for me diablo immortal it's gonna be a B above average. This is a game that I wanna revisit in about eight to 10 months, because if you play any type of mobile game, the issues that you have on day one are not the same issues that you have way down in month eight, right? So the things that people are kind of really talking about right now with Diablo Mortal with the legendary gems and stuff like that, eight months to a year from now, it's gonna be a totally different resource you're grinding for. Legendary gems, everyone's gonna have them. This is gonna be something totally different. Every single gacha game after a period of time, always becomes more and more generous and the things that were at the top always trickle down baby the only place where trickle down economics works is gotcha games right you want to play a generous game play a game that's one year old or two years old and compare it to launch it's a totally different thing so i'm looking forward to playing diablo maybe in like like i said in about eight months to a year to see if they figured out a better more satisfying daily gameplay loop and to see if they've instituted cross server so that is it my name is fg3000 this was the the tier list for the month of June, and I'll see you for July next month. Later.